Hey there guys and gals, it's me Norex and welcome back to Unreal Engine C++ programming tutorial. So in this video we will only be talking about, well, we won't be talking about any of the interface that you see here, we will only be talking about the interior of a simple and basic class in Unreal Engine. All right, we won't even talk about the architecture, we will just talk about, you know, the basic things. Alright, so you can create a class, and as you can see, I've already created a class and I've already opened it in my Visual Studio because I just wanted it to be there. Alright, so the way you do it is quite simple. You either, you know, if, if this guy is selected, you just do add new C class. If this guy is selected, you do add new C class. You could just right click here, add C class, or just go to file new C class. Either way, it will work and it will give you a window like this. Okay, so in this window you can see a couple of classes to create from. Alright, so you will create a child of this class, you will create a child of pawn, a child of actor, so you can create any class you want and it will be inheriting from the class that you have selected here. You can also create an empty class with a default constructor and destructor if you desire to. Anyway, Let's go ahead and show all classes. So there are a bunch of classes here, but they're not all of the classes that are available to you. There are tons of classes right here, and they all inherit from an object class, but we're not here to talk about that. We're only here to talk about some other things. <laughs> the um, What's inside actor, for instance. And the only thing that we care about right now is the actor class itself. The other class, ABC import settings, or actor components, um, actor factory, actor grouping utils, you know, there are a bunch of classes, animation assets, animation SDK, Android permission, there are tons and tons of uh, classes right here, but we don't really care about any of, the, any of those right now, only actor. So what you can do is just select actor, either double click on it or hit next, well, not here, if you double click on it here, we'll just open it, you could double click on it here, it will go forward, you can give it a name right here and give it a path right there. My actor already exists because I have already created it. Um, you could do public or private if you want to, and uh, this will. You can't really take it out once you've done it. The way you take it out is you take out the, the path. All right. You could choose path. You could choose the project that this is going to be created on. And that's uh, it about this. So let's go ahead and uh, hit create class and create your first class alright now let me go ahead and open this guy up in my visual studio so as you can see it's been open before uh, this video began because it just might take a bit of time to open so I just opened it before just so you could uh, see what's what this is all about so in this video all I want to talk about is um, this entire design this interior of, uh, of the first class that we create, the actor class. And in the next video, we will talk about what actor is in itself. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this design right here. See what the hell these functions are, because there are three, as you can see. There is the constructor, there is a begin play, and then there is the tick function. Okay, so let's read the comments sets default values for this actors properties well you don't really have to set any default values you could do some logic here but it's better to just do that so sets default values uh, primary actor tick B can ever tick is true doesn't really matter don't really look at this guy the only thing that I want to talk about talk to you guys about right now is when this guy happens alright so whenever a class is created okay, within the game the default values are set. The constructor is called. All right, so constructor gets called. Everything is dandy. Everything is good. Then begin play gets called. All right, so the only thing that I want to clarify right here is that begin play happens after the constructor. It has to be created for it to be called upon. Right? You can't really call upon something that doesn't exist. So you gotta call something on something that exists. So constructor happens first, then begin play. You know, some RAIIBS going out there. Alright, so sets the default values, yeah, all good, all dandy. Call when the game starts or when spawned. Alright, so begin play happens on the first frame 
or rather the frame before the first frame, the zeroth frame, when the game starts. All right, so when you start, any object or actor that exists within the world of Unreal will have begin play getting called. All right, so begin play gets called on every single object just like that. All right, on the first frame or the frame before it, I'm not quite sure. I'm not super sure about that. All right. Um, so yeah, it's a method that gets called. You could do some logic here, like I don't know, explode. So it it gets called, it explodes, just like that. And then you can not do tick at all and just explode it, remove it after explosion. Quite easy, quite simple. And then we have another function or method called tick. Now tick is a bit like begin play. It's actually very much like begin play with the uh, single difference that it's called every single frame. So as you can see here called every frame. Let me just put the comments back in. I don't know why it raised that. So called every frame. What it means is that if you have a computer that can run 60 frames per second, then tick is called 60 frames. If it's 144 frames per second, then tick is called 144 times per second. So tick is basically all there is to it. One frame, one tick. One frame, one tick. That's all there is to the tick function. And then you can do your gradual, um, what is it, the gradual logic, the logic that requir requires some timing inside your tick function. Right? This is how basic it gets. Now, there is one more thing that we want to talk about right here, and then I will get to what this guy is all about here. All right, And then these three dudes and you know all that good stuff on the top because I didn't even mention them. Okay, so what the hell is a delta time? Now, if you have ever used a game engine or any kind of a graphical engine, you can s definitely have seen something like delta time or delta seconds or, you know, delta something, delta well, chrono delta, I don't know. So, what the hell is delta time? Well, let's say I have a supercomputer that can, well, not a supercomputer, I have a good computer that can run 144 frames per second. Your friend has a computer, or my friend has a computer that can run 20 frames per second. It's a bad computer, it has like 4 gigabytes of RAM, it's terrible, alright? So, and then I, I was to do some sort of a logic that worked with timing, alright? So, let's say I want to create or implement a reload method, alright? Now, if reload was to work with frames, let's say I want to reload in 200 frames. Mine could take something like 1.2 seconds to reload. Your friends, or my friends, could take 10 seconds. All right? And this is where shit hits the fan. If you work with frames, if you try to calculate everything with frames, then this kind of problem can happen. All right, 1.2 seconds, 10 seconds. Let's say the game was online. I could just, he could be playing in slow motion. All right, I could just do everything super fast. He would be have, having to wait 10 seconds for a simple reload and, you know, so on and so forth. So, we don't really ever do anything with frames. We don't do our calculations with frames. We hate frames. We only love delta time. All right. But what is delta time? Well, we're not going to go ahead and look at how it's implemented because it's complicated. I, there is an implementation of delta time in my warp framework. Uh, you could go check it out if you want, but no, we don't care about it just yet. So what the hell is delta time? Delta time is a time kind of a thing that is always a second, like one per second. So one delta time can accumulate well, you can accumulate, did you write it like this? I don't know. Uh, one delta time per second. So that means, <coughs> I'm sorry, let's go ahead and create a integer here. Let's say int or float x is equal to 0 0.0f. Oh, I have a float there. I can do x plus equals delta time. Right there. And as you can see, Right here, when I do something like this, when I create my logic here, but uh, it's actually better to put the logic down there. We don't want to, you know, we want to first call that guy, then do what we do. Alright. It depends, really. So, 
This guy right here, um, it accumulates one delta time per second. Basically, what it means is that no matter the configuration of your computer, no matter how strong or weak it is, delta time will be added once per second. Okay? It will be added one per second. So that means one, two, three, four seconds have passed. The value of x will now be four. Right? Quite easy and quite simple. So, um, yeah, that's that's basically all there is to delta time. You know, something quite simple and easy, and you can use it to to measure time and do stuff like that. So, I can also do something like this. I can do delta times times 10. So, delta time times 10 basically means that x will be added 10 values per second. All right? So, we will add 10 values per second to x. And this is all there is to it. Delta time is a value that is universally uniform among all computers. All right, one per second. It accumulates one delta time per second. You could also do some division. Right, ten seconds will uh, have one, so you can accumulate one per ten seconds if you do something like this. All right. So now you know what delta time is, it's something quite simple and easy, but let's talk about this whole entire BS on the top. So we have core minimal, minimal game framework, actor.h, my actor that generated, this is important, very important, I always put that in the end, always put, if I, if I was to do something like this, there would be tons of errors, alright, always put this guy in the end. Because it's generated, it doesn't exist, it has to be generated, there's something that requires... I'm not going to go technical on, on, on this guy. Alright, so let's look at these macros. The U-Class and the CPP Project API, or that rather the project name API macro. Alright, so the U-Class, if I was to peek the definition, you could see that it's nothing. It's just there. Alright, if UE build docs, define whatever, define U-Class, it's nothing. It's just there. But what the hell is this U-Class? So U-Class is... Um, uclass is a macro that allows unreal engine to know about the existence of a my actor and know that it can use a my actor within itself so if i was to go back to unreal drag and drop this guy right here you can see well you can't really see the object but you can see that it's been dragged and dropped into my uh, my scene i can delete it i can do it again so yeah it's it, it's right there right so I can actually drag and drop that guy over there. But if I was to take this out and compile it and do it again, let's see if it compiles. It shouldn't even compile. I don't. I don't think it compiles if, if I take that out. Anyhow, so U class right there. Uh, let's Unreal Engine know that this class exists. Let's use it and you know all that good stuff. CPP Project API is going to be in generated .h. Um, it's going to be here in, within this file right there so we can't really see it it doesn't exist um, just yet and CPP project API basically it's like a calling convention but for a class uh, I don't really know what's inside this guy and I don't really want to know because I don't really care and as you can see compile failed we can't really compile it this guy really needs to be on the top over there all right so always put this guy there it has to be there it must always be there Okay, let's see if... No, 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 no refactoring. I don't need refactoring. Okay, so a my actor is the name of the class, and then we have public a actor, so everything inherits from actor, and we will actually talk about the hierarchy that Unreal has um, and the design of the system in the next video. Okay, but before that, let's talk about the core minimal. This guy will remain for the next video, but core minimal... Let's go ahead and open core minimal. So core minimal is just kind of a ease of access header all right in it includes every kind of header that you want all right and every kind of header that you might use so we have core globals HAL platform TLS um, I don't know I'm just randomly picking them I don't even know what that was <laughs> so reverse algorithm uh, vector 2d uh, we all know what vector 2d is come on compression um, Choose class, remove reference, enable if. Really, do we really need an entire header file for this guy? Execute, um, misc execute. Let's go ahead and see what that's what's in there. All right, so yeah, just a simple 
function. <laughs> nothing, nothing to be uh, worried about, nothing to be concerned about. All quite simple, all quite easy. Anyhow, point is, uh, now you know what's within the actor class itself. All right, so core minimal just is an ease of access header file. It just gives you a whole bunch of other header files. It includes a whole bunch of other th stuff. Um, U class allows the Unreal Engine to know about the class. This determines the uh, project that this is related to. So CPP project API. This is related to CPP project, not any other project. And then uh, we inherit from actor. We have the constructor that is called when the game starts, or rather when the object is created. We have begin play, which is obviously a virtual function that is overridden and it's it exists in actor. So we have that guy over there. We have super begin play, which calls the function on the top. If it calls the begin play on the super class on the class on the top of it, if I was to pick definition, it's a whole bunch of good stuff about super class. So yeah, and uh, we have the tick function, which has a float delta time as the parameter. So you know it takes in delta time. Delta time accumulates one per second, and then we have the tick as well just like this it calls the super classes tick function anyhow that's been it for this video I think yeah there's uh, yeah there's not much to talk about I've done my list okay uh, in the next video we'll talk about the hierarchy of Unreal Engine and the design of the system all right don't worry we'll get to the fun parts pretty soon Anyhow, guys, that's been it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like. If you have any questions, do ask them in the comments. And if you really enjoyed this video, do subscribe to the channel. That would help a lot. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.